Hey everybody, this is Dave with Alum House Sound. Today we're gonna to talk about the P16. Now, recently I put out a video called the P16 Trick, and that's where we're tricking the console into using some of the P16 features to send audio into our doll. But today, we're actually gonna talk a little bit just a little bit about the actual P16. So I have a client that's uh, here in Virginia that I've worked with and I was down on site with them just a couple weeks back and they finally got some P16s that they had ordered and they were they got the cable run, the Cat5 from their, their tech room into, into the, the stage. And so now they're gonna be setting things up actually this morning. So I'm, I'm trying to put this video together kind of quick for Let's them and maybe you'll learn something about the P16. So before we dive into the console, just a quick note about their set up. They have a, a large number of vocals, maybe six or seven vocals, a pastor's microphone. They're also running in their band. They've got drum set, so full, full kit. Uh, and then they also, in addition to the drummer, have a keyboard player and the option of a B3 with a Leslie cabinet, which is mic'd on the high end and the low end. And then sometimes they'll toss a bass player in there as well. So they have a different, a uh, couple of different options. They're clearly not using all 32 channels on the console at this time, but if they wanted to add additional instrumentalists, we'll talk a little bit at the end about doing a bus setup specifically for their vocals, but they could do that for their band as well if they wanted to group different channels together. All right, enough talking, let's dive into the console. So I'm gonna go to routing. I'm gonna go over to the right and go to P16. Here it's gonna be automatically preset so that your 16 inputs are taking your first 16 uh, direct, your 16 channels, but we need to change that. So we're gonna leave some spaces in here that can be filled in later on, but uh, channel one is gonna be kick, channel two should be snare. Channel three, uh, we're just gonna put as overhead left. So we're going to switch that here and that's gonna be channel seven. Uh, channel four is gonna be overhead right. Then we're gonna put uh, channel five. Channel five here is going to be your tracks, which is channel nine. Then you've got organ. So we're gonna come down here and we will do, that's organ high. Seven is going to be 12, which is organ low. Eight is gonna to go to keys, which is channel 13. Then we can skip down and I'm just taking a peek down here. Now we've got uh, worship leaders and pastors. So uh, we've got eight channels left uh, excuse me, nine channels left, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so this works out well. So we're gonna start with direct channel 24, and we're just gonna hit them down. So next is 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and then the last one we're gonna get is the pastor's mic. So you've got all of your worship leader microphones in there. You've also got uh, four channels for drums. You've got your tracks, your organ high and low, and your keys. Now, if you add a bass guitar in, you might substitute and swap that out for your organ low, uh, or you might choose to, to only use one overhead mic for your drums, which is a recommendation I would make. Uh, you don't need stereo necessarily for your overhead, so you've got an extra channel there. But all of this stuff right now is coming in pre-EQ, so this is the other thing to think about. Um, for channel one, I, I would actually make, I would switch all of these to be uh, pre-fader. So that's gonna get any EQ and compression that you put on those is going to be uh, sent over to them so that they don't have to do as much of the changing. So again, we can just set that pre-fader there, then we can push to go to the next channel. You can push pre-fader, next channel, pre-fader, next channel, pre-fader, next channel. And we're gonna set all of these as pre-fader so that any changes you've made in your channel strip will take into account here as well. So that's the quick setup that I would do on this. If you do need any uh, anything else to open up channel-wise, you can always just set some of your uh, your vocal worship leader mics to be individual. 
and then group everybody else together. We do have this uh, bus eight that we set up, which is actually where all of your, uh, your vocals come through that bus so that they are EQ'd and compressed together. And that's just for the house. So any, anyway, all of these changes that we're making here are not gonna affect your live stream or anything else. We're just figuring out where we take the signal to send it up to the P16. So first and foremost, before we dive into this, I want you to know that gain is king. If you don't set the gain on your board properly, these things are not gonna work well, no matter how much money you've spent in them, no matter how many you have, all of those things go by the wayside if the gain at the board is not set right. What you're sending to these starts at the gain and then makes its way down. Now we set these as pre-fader, so all of the EQ and compression settings that you're doing on your board will impact what these people hear at, at their P16s. That could be good because you get some decent EQing going on ahead of, uh, ahead of what comes into the P16. But if you need to make that change and you want them to have complete control, you can go back to, uh, to the, the previous setting that it was on. But again, set your gain right at the board, get that signal up at an average of minus 12 to minus nine on your input meter, and that's gonna make all of this work so much better. All right, let's dive into the back side first, and then we will move on. So when we look at the back of the P16, obviously you've got your power here on the, the left-hand side, you've got an on-off button, and then you have this, which is the important part, the ultranet, here gives you the ability to daisy chain these together. So if you're gonna be sitting near each other, you don't need to get the, the Cat5 distribution. You can just run into one of these, out from that, and into the next one, which is what this, uh, this church is actually doing. They have two or three of these at this point. And so they're all grouped together on one side with the band, and you've got the ability just to run in and out uh, from one to the next. So that's a nice benefit. If you wanna be fancy, you do have the MIDI in that you could do some, some cool things with, uh, but most churches are not gonna be using that. You also have the line out that if you needed to run to uh, like a set of studio monitors or something like that, you could do it, but most people are just going to use the end here where you've got the headphone out. That is a stereo output by default, which is really nice. You don't need anything else to make it a stereo setup. All right, here on the front, what you're gonna get is this thing is actually its own 16 channel digital mixer. It's packed with a bunch of features. It's got all kinds of things you can do and it's it's a really nice unit if you can trim your, your groupings down to only 16 inputs. So to begin, the way this works is very similar to the digital console itself or uh, like, like the way I explain anything, this is just a computer. So you have some buttons here, you've got the main button, or you have your 16 inputs down here, and when you select one of them, then all of these controls up here are going to deal with whatever you selected. So to start out with, if you hit the main button, then these features, you've now got an EQ, a three band EQ that you can mess with. You've got a limiter and a level and then you also have volume. And so you can, you can adjust these, uh, these to your, your liking for the mains. But let's say kick drum. So you select channel one, that's our kick drum. You now can EQ it. Uh, you can do some limiting on it if you want. Uh, I would kind of stay away from some of that. But the volume here is gonna be the volume for that input and you'll see the encoder, uh, encoder knob on the right, and when you turn that up, you're gonna get little red lights here that kind of walk their way, stair step up to your volume. Let's say you get to vocals, and you wanna have this set up according to the way you're looking at it. Well, uh, I think you've got channels 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. These channels here are vocals. You can select one, use the pan to be able to pan them left or right, and because this is a stereo unit, it's only going to impact your mix with the stuff that you're hearing on this unit, and you can have them panned left or panned right. Uh, maybe you want your click track uh, or your backing tracks panned to one side or the next. You've got the ability to do that as well. 
you do have a mute button. Uh, so if you click on a channel, let's say that whatever channel four is, you want that muted, you can just click on it, hit the mute button, and just like a console, it's going to go ahead and mute that. You can also click on it and solo, just like on a console, and you'll be able to hear just that coming through your ears. So lots of features. Also make sure that you note that you've got the ability to uh, store and recall different scenes. Uh, you can check the owner's manual for how to do that, and that is a great tool set up so that if you have uh, rotating people like our church does, you might have drummer number one that stores and uses drummer. You know, they, they come in on the first week of the month usually, and they're going to store on scene one. The second person might store scene two, so on and so forth. You've got the ability to store these scenes and recall them so that all of your settings are saved right into this little box here. All right, so again, just like I stated where uh, at the beginning of this, make sure that your gain is set properly on your board for each input, and that way the signal that you send to these P16s will be usable, will be uh, you know functional for everybody that's using these monitors, and it will really set a good experience for those people on these P16s. All right, so there you go. That's a quick look at the P16, a little bit of information about how it is set up, how it's designed, how it functions, and how you can maybe use it to work in your environment. Now, I am gonna do another video uh, comparing the P16 to uh, the way that our church runs, which is without the P16s, uh, but that video is coming out soon. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and, and the notification bell. That way, when that video comes out, you'll be notified and you can watch that and learn some more information about that setup as well. If this has been helpful, give it a thumbs up and leave any comments or questions down in the comment section below and everybody will benefit from that. All right, well, that's it for now. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.